After years of negotiations, China has managed to rally 14 other Asia-Pacific nations in the biggest trade deal in history, the so-called RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Those 14 nations include long-term partners of the United States and Europe, but the US itself has been shut out of the deal. This is a huge win for China in the trade war it's been running with the US over the last few years, not only effectively taking away a lot of trading partners with the US economy as well as the European one, but at the same time they're locking down one third of the world's GDP. That is very important because this has the very real potential to hurt both the US and European economy if not handled in the right way. This CNN article actually does a really good job at explaining what's going on here. China signs a huge Asia Pacific trade deal with 14 countries. China has just joined forces with more than a dozen countries across the Asia Pacific region to sign a huge free trade deal nearly a decade in the making. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership spans 15 countries and 2.2 billion people or nearly 30% of the world's population, according to a joint statement released by the nations on Sunday when the deal was signed. The combined GDP total totals roughly $26 trillion and they account for nearly 28% of global trade based on 2019 data. The deal includes several of the region's heaviest economic hitters aside from China, including Japan and South Korea. New Zealand and Australia are also partners as are Indonesia, Thailand and Vietnam in Southeast Asia. So China has been successful in, take, in, in convincing both Japan and South Korea and, uh, and at the same time New Zealand and Australia, all countries that are huge trading partners with the US now, you might be thinking that these nations could just be dealing with both the US and all of these new nations at the same time. But one of the very key details of the new uh, agreement between all of these 15 nations is that they're trying to take away tariffs with, when you're trading within those nations. And that is something both the US and the European markets cannot compete with. So the real question here obviously is will Japan and South Korea still trade with the US when they can get the same goods without the tariffs from nations very close to them? I guess time will only tell. The trade agreement was first proposed in 2012 as a way to create one of the world's largest free trade, free trade zones. It's tough to gauge the immediate economic significance of the deal. The members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, a group of 10 countries that signed the agreement, said that it would eliminate tariffs and quotas on 65% on the goods that are traded in the region. So they are looking to get rid of all of these tariffs, but this article from the BBC does explain that it could take up to 20 years before the tariffs are actually gone. Take a look at this. The R RCEP is expected to eliminate a range of tariffs on imports within 20 years. It also includes provisions on intellectual property, telecommunications, financial services, e-commerce and professional services. But it's possible the new rules of origin, which officially define where a product comes from, will have the biggest impact. Already many member states have free trade agreements, FTAs, with each other, but there are limitations. So these limitations that they're talking about is that in Southeast Asia, typically when you were building something and you ordered in something from another nation, there would be a tariff on that product that you had come in to produce whatever you're producing. But now this deal will take away all of those tariffs. tariffs. So it will change completely the costs for all of the nations dealing within themselves, all of these 15 nations. And that is the huge breakthrough that China has been successful in negotiating and implementing into this deal. 
Obviously, that gives all of these countries dealing with each other a very big incentive to keep dealing with each other and not go outside of these 15 nations. If you can get a goods over here very close to you, why would you send your order to the other side of the planet dealing with the US or Europe when you can get it much cheaper and faster from your neighboring nations now without these tariffs? Obviously, that will lead to the, both the US and especially the European economies to take a big hit, especially those companies that deal with Asia in general. Another huge nation that I haven't mentioned until now is India. And under his presidency, Donald Trump has tried to create better trading and military relations with India. So about a year ago, India announced that officially they wouldn't be part of this deal. At least back then, it looked like India was choosing the US over China when it comes to all of these trade deals and military agreements. But now the US is most likely facing a new president in Joe Biden. And my guess is that Joe Biden will be doing everything his handlers permit him to do to try to get into this new deal with these other 15 nations. So there's a lot of things going on in terms of international relations in this trading deal that's very important to keep our eye on. No matter how you look at it, this is a huge win for China. A massive win for China in a time where they've come under fire for the pandemic and they've been taking hits in the trade war with the US. So no matter how you look at it, this is a massive deal for China. There are a lot of Chinese people in the future because of this deal that are going to be eating quality rice not these standard rice corns but quality rice i don't know i don't know if that's uh if that's a bad thing to say i feel like that's a bad thing to say i just want to say that we eat potatoes here in denmark and we like we have good potatoes and bad potatoes i just assume that they eat a lot of rice and, but i feel like that's a bad thing to say these days a lot of news will be coming out over the next few days on this issue. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And thank you so much to all of you guys who have subscribed. You are literally, I have the best subscribers to my channel. I love engaging with you guys and, and uh, addressing all of the issues that I bring up. So uh, keep, keep giving me your opinions in the comment section and I'll make sure to reply to you. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.